Learning to play guitar is overwhelming. There's a lot to learn and people have so many questions. Like, do I even have the right guitars for what I'm trying to play? What bands can I play with this guitar? Because let's face it, most people will start with a good old six strings, but most modern metal band these days, they're playing seven or eight strings. And they're still playing six strings, they're using some alternate tuning. So that's why people still teach the old classic, right? Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Megadeth. That being said, if you use drop D tuning, which is still very accessible, you can play some slightly more modern bands like Contera, Opeth, Tools. I always tell people to start learning songs that they like. But the most important thing for you right now is to just get a quick win. Learn a quick riff that people are going to recognize when you play it in front of them and it's going to make you feel good. That's it. So that's why today I'll show you the verse from Enter Sandman by Metallica. Everybody knows it. But first, how to tune your guitar. Let's start with the first string, which is the smallest, and it's the E string. If the tuner shows D or C, you're too low, you need to bring it up. If it shows F or G, you're too high, you need to turn it down. Now for the B string. If the tuner shows A or G, you're too low. If it shows C or D, you're too high. Now the G string. If it shows F or E, you're too low. If it shows A or B, yeah, you're too high. Then the D string. If it shows C, B, you're too low. If it shows E, F, you're too high. Now the A string. If the tuner shows G or F, you're too low. If it shows B or C, you're too high. And lastly, the E string. If it shows D or C, you're too low. If it shows F or G, you're too high. The first chord is the E power chord. So what you see here is how it looks in a chord box. String number six is empty. Then string five and four are at the second fret. This is how it looks in a guitar tab. Instead of dots, you have the strings and the number of the frets. So I'm showing you both of these because you'll see chord boxes and tabs a lot while learning guitar. And tabs are very useful for beginners. But I want to teach you not to rely on those from day one. I mean, even I, I still sometimes look at tabs if I'm trying to learn something very complicated. And if you're trying to learn something that you can't yet pick up with your ears, use the tab. Don't feel bad about it. But, but too many people rely on those like crutches. I mean, I see them all the time commenting on their videos like, tabs, please. I mean, if you see the guy playing in front of you, you don't need tabs. By asking that, you don't even realize how first lazy that is, and second, how much is holding you back. One day you're going to play in a band, right? Well, when the other guitar player shows you a riff, he wants you to learn it right now. You can't ask him to go home, write the tabs, so that you can learn it for the next jam session. doesn't work like that. So remember, I know you can do it. You just have to believe in yourself. So we're basically going to have three chords in this song. The E power chord, the F sharp power chord, and the G power chord. Why is it called a power chord? Because you have the root, the fifth, and the root again. So in this case, G, D, G. So here's the E power chord. Right? So zero, two, two. The F sharp power chord. So we're fretting two, four, four. And then the G power chord. And we're fretting at three, five, five. Take a few minutes to try to get those right. But don't worry, they don't have to sound perfect today. Right? Don't sweat it. So I'll just play the riff once and then explain what I'm doing. So 
So you're about to learn the most important techniques in all of heavy metal, palm muting, which is basically putting the edge of your finger right on the edge of the bridge. So instead of sounding like this, you're choking it out. The furthest you're from the bridge, the more choked out it is. So how the riff goes, you're gonna play seven times the E chord, then one time the F chord. This is the F power chord. We're playing one, three, three. And that's the first half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is how the second part goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. So from there we alternate between our G power chord, our F sharp power chord, with the E string at zero. If I use just one string, it's going to be G, E, F sharp, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E. Practice this slowly, right? It may sound like a lot right now, but trust me, you're gonna get this in no time. I'm gonna play it one more time slower. Don't forget that on YouTube, you can lower the speed even more, right? So you might have noticed that at the very end, I'm sliding from the G to the F sharp. If it's too hard right now, just pick everything. All right? It doesn't matter. It's your first riff. It doesn't have to be perfect. When you feel confident, but at first sliding is going to feel extremely awkward. Your, your finger is going to be all over the place. And it's all right. It's fine. That's how it was when I started too. If you have any other questions, either about this riff or learning guitar in general, drop them below in the comments. And stick around if you want to see more content like this. Cheers.